And we are live once again here on the Instagram for the Poetry Kingdom. I almost forgot the name of what our Instagram the Poetry Kingdom. That's right, yes. Instagram is telling the followers about it. Today we have an artist feature. Very excited. Ah, and there is Jolie in Poetry. And all right let's get the damn thing started hello there hello how are you doing this hey. lovely how are you doing this lovely i guess evening for you oh it's too hot what's it like hot. <laughs> Too bloody hot in the UK. It's actually pretty yeah. nice here. No, it's too hot here. And we're not used to it in our delicate selves. <laughs> what part of the UK are you from, if you don't mind saying? Manchester. Oh, Manchester. That's right, yes. Manchester yes, City. Proud Mancunian. <laughs> I, I'm a Tottenham Hotspur fan myself. How did you manage that in Canada? Um, quite by accident. Um, this was back in the day when um, they had, um, oh, who was the name of that German footballer? Uh, Klinsmann. Um, Klinsmann. Klinsmann, yeah. Yeah, I was a big fan of Klinsmann and he was on Tottenham. So, so that was, that was how that, that randomness came to happen. Right. Well, he's gone now, so any waves and strays we take at City? <laughs> any strays. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, this is our featured artist interview for this week. This is Johan Lee. Um, a now a moderator at the Poetry Kingdom and um, a fantastic, brilliant poet. Um, such incredible, beautiful words, elevated, elegant stylings, um, published in more than one ways now, both in terms of poetry and both in terms of prose with... Um, that book for young children. So what would you like to say to the people at home as far as an introduction? Um, hello, uh, I'm John Lee. Um, I'm more than surprised to be talking to you on here. Um, not something I expected to be doing. Um, definitely out of my comfort zone um, because usually uh, I suppose my way of expressing myself is through poetry. Um, and then with, I think with lockdown, um, I kind of, you know, the world went a bit mad and I sort of thought to myself, wait a minute, nothing might come back. All my pieces of paper with all my words on screwed up or whatever or in bits of diaries uh, might be lost. And just in case the pandemic comes for me, uh, I'd better start, you know, collecting them together. So it kind of started like that, really. And then, um, as I'll say when I speak to you about the children's, which is basically a simple poem in the picture book, um, there is a line in there that kind of reflects how I feel about most of what's going on in the world and what can I do. So yeah <laughs> yeah the um the pandemic definitely um has had um i think um a big impact on how we as as artists and creators express ourselves and it's kind of obviously the the internet and social media has been huge for a while but i think it's pushed um a lot of people even further into that and you know a lot of people that probably um, wouldn't have gotten into it either if it hadn't been for that. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, literally my, 
my starting point was probably that was just Brandy telling everyone in the poetry kingdom that we're live. <laughs> just flashed <laughs> up on the screen. Thank you, Brandy. Um, but yeah, I think that from the book perspective, uh, literally it was all started with seeing something about a dolphin, believe it or not, and having that feeling and this like, you know, dolphins in captivity and, and whales not being treated kindly and people not being treated kindly. And I just had a moment of sort of what can I do about that? And my response is always to write a poem. So then from there, you might think, what use is a poem in regard to um, these things that are happening? So I, I thought, I wrote this poem and then I just thought, actually, I'm going to turn that poem into a book, a picture book for young children, because I'm not saying adults are like lost to us. But if you're going to start and try and save the world, you need to say start with the little people. That's yeah. that's very true. Yeah. And so, they are, they're, you know, once you get to a certain age, you, you tend to get locked down in your ideas and your preconceptions. But, you know, children are just an open book and available to be influenced in in every possible way, both negative and positive. And, yeah, you know, hats exactly. off to you for, for yeah, so, you know. So I think I, that was my initial thing. And then the frustration of like, just wanting, I've tried, you know, to get poems on in magazines. I've sent them off to competitions. Um, I've, you know, wanted to be published and sent, and I just got, I wasted quite a lot of time trying to sort of get some kind of um, publishing deal. And then I just, I got really frustrated with it. And then the, the pandemic came and I thought, right, I'm going to invest in myself. Um, you know, woman on the change can just sort of do as she pleases now and all inhibitions to one side. If you fall flat on your face, so what? You know, doesn't it's not the end of the world. It's worse things. So, I just decided that I would publish my first two books. I've got another one coming out in September about a whale. Oh, nice! Is, that is quite close to my heart. And then, and this one is quite close to my heart because it's doing something for the British Heart Foundation, which is I uh, lost far too many family and friends to heart disease. So, it's. <laughs> Yeah, it was just that feeling of, of wanting to do something. And then, and then I'm not really sure how I, how I came across the Poetry Kingdom in terms of, but, you know, <laughs> you, you can't, I, I don't really know how I did. But um, once I found a place where I could post poetry with like-minded people, it's literally massively opened my eyes to, like, you know, just constantly, poetry can be a thing to compare yourself constantly to like greats. And there are many greats in poetry of this time now. Um, and initially you think, oh, that, well, I think I've sent poetry that's kind of, I've tried it to be more wordy. I've tried to be specific to what I think is wanted by that publisher or that magazine or, I've done all that and it's just got me nowhere. And I think mm. what's, what's happened with sort of being involved in forums and like-minded people is that I, it's just, um, you realize that in the end, you, you can't copy anybody else. What comes out of you is your own. And if people like it or they don't, it's, I don't know. There's not much you can do about it. It's, I can only, from my perspective, looking round, develop more skill um, because that's not my forte in terms of, um, you know, technique and, uh, you know, form and things like that. I, I just, I am a person that just spews words. <laughs> well, I mean, geez, um, your, your spewing is absolutely brilliant 
Well, that's really kind of you, as I say. But it's it's just I I just see, you know, I see ways I could improve upon it, and but I do strongly feel I like it's literally uh, an ambition of mine has already been fulfilled by being the Poetry Kingdom first publishing a poem of mine in its book. And then that's led to, you know, the Soul Poet Society and the Sonnet Sanctuary and uh, Open Skies. Um, and that's, that's just massively um, important to me that it's, um, it's finally found its way onto a page um, with like-minded and new peers of the time. Like that poem that I wrote of like, how nice it would be in the future if we if you were talked about as being part of an era of poetry mm. so all you can do is leave some words on a page and just if someone likes them that's great yeah absolutely you have to um you know i think it's really important to cultivate your voice and be completely true and and genuine and uncompromising with it obviously you know you can experiment try new things but you know that's the one thing i think in art and poetry is that people know whether you're being genuine or not yeah i, I think that's what i've learned over the last year that just um probably certain things that i've written i would have not really considered this quite often times that i will post a poem and think, well, I'm not sure about this one. Well, and then it gets really good feedback. And, you, and you're like, why is that poem good? And another one that I thought was singing and dancing is not. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, you know, I still feel I have a lot to learn myself. I don't claim to be anything. I've, I've, had, I've certainly had a good year in terms of... Um, you know, achieving something with my poetry, which was really all I wanted to do. So, um, yeah, things keep flicking on the screen in front of your face, Patrick, very rudely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all those notifications there, yeah. Yeah, things keep pinging on your head there. So, yeah, so, so I don't know. No, I, I think that's that's very true. That's definitely true of of my experience and my experience over the last year as well. So how, how did you start off in the very beginning in terms of, of writing and poetry? Well, I think as a child, um, as a child, I, I think you sort of, um, it's not the case for the generation now, but I think when we were younger, it was, you know, you didn't sort of answer back your elders and you maybe didn't you know I was I suppose I've been well behaved and never really sometimes you might have thought something that you've not said because it's not appropriate and so I suppose just times things were that happened in your life that's been a time to write it down so I think I've done that from an early age but never collected it into any sort of collection and um, yeah so as it but as I've come to this point now in the last year it's just developed into something else now like there it would be growing up it would be few and far between and and then you know you have lapses in your I didn't sort of create a, a routine of writing it was just when and where if a line comes into my head then I might just you know write a poem about it but um then sort of stuff's happening to you as you're growing up you know so it, it's like poetry to me has been like a diary of events mm -hmm. and uh things that i haven't liked usually straight not usually happy bursting joyous poetry usually things right. that upset you isn't it that sort of send you off on a path of writing something down oh woe is me it's like <laughs> love that line so um yeah, so things like that. But I think this last year, I've learned something drastic to myself in that um, I've got into a habit now 
So not just through prompts that I've been looking at, I'm just finding inspiration in everything. And I think once you get into a routine of writing every day, um, you spark yourself. So it, I, I don't actually know where I have, but I've just literally flicked through my poetry in the last year and I've wrote nearly 2,000 poems <laughs> in, this, wow. in, in this past year. And, <laughs> and some of them I can't even remember. You know, I just think that I think, oh, who wrote that? Because it was sort of a day and a time and a place, what you were thinking. But I think right. what I'm saying is, what I have learned this year is that um, habit of writing is really important if you want to develop it. And I think I've improved my writing just just by practice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and in terms, that's that's one of the things, you know, that I kind of wanted to, t to touch upon because you're extremely um, prolific and yeah, I'm... I've told you loads of times, Patrick, I just talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. So what, when you sit down to write something, um, what is your process like? Do you, do you have a concept in your head of, of what you want to write about? Do you not? Do you just kind of flow with it and how much editing do you do or or how much do you just kind of let it be okay well one of the things that happens to me that drives me mad is literally when i go to bed at night word will come in my head and then that word is turns into a sentence and then i think oh that i need this sentence tomorrow so i'll be i'll be reciting it over and over in my head it going to sleep so, and sometimes I remember it and sometimes I don't, but I quite often wake up and that literally the, thir the first thought in my head might be a word, might be the way, you know, the sun is shining through the blinds or literally that I've woke up with an ache I didn't have yesterday. Um, totally, I think in, like, I am a person to talk to, you'll gather that I go off on a tangent. Mm -hmm. My brain is like that. So I could be talking to you about poetry and in a minute I'll be talking to you about something else I, because <laughs> I just divert. And I think that's, my, that's how I write things in that I can be doing something or I can be walking the dog and see a, a cloud shape <laughs> and, and just literally think, <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. And then the next thing, I'm writing a poem. So, yeah, in terms of process, it just, it, it is something, if it comes out of me in like, if one, I get a first line, I'm off. And then if it doesn't flow and dance, um, then it's not for me, that one, and I'll leave it. And I might come back to it, see it another time and think, oh, yeah, I'll look at you again. But I'm not someone who sits agonizing over um, words. You know, like I, I don't sit there thinking, today I'm going to write um, a sonnet, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I did write uh, some sonnets, which I'm very proud of because that's quite, the form of it is not my usual thing. Um, you know, it's it still had to come along quickly. Otherwise, I'm I literally discard it. <laughs> the only thing I ever spend real time on with a poem, and when I say time, I mean, you know, if it doesn't come to me in ten minutes, um, it's it's not working. Is is last lines? I like last lines in particular. Yeah. So. Do you have, and you said that, you know, you've been writing since you're a child and it's kind of like, um, you know, a bit of a diary, but do you have like a memory of explicitly the first thing that you wrote that you would say, you know, 
this is an intended poem and what that was about? Yeah, I do. Um, literally the first poem I wrote, um, I think I was about 10 years old and I was just having a bit of a bad time with some people at school and I wrote a poem. It was all doom and gloom and sadness and, you know, and I remember writing this poem, but I was in a class at the time with a teacher that was really encouraging my writing. Um, and I remember writing this poem and, and folding it up into about 20 pieces, you know, tiny, and shoving it in one of the pots um, just to be, because it was, it was not a fun poem. It was sort of a mm. doom and gloom and sadness poem. Um, but again, that just comes back to uh, poetry being a way of expressing your feelings, doesn't it? Yeah, And then absolutely. I think in, in the past year, I've learned that, you know, sometimes people um, relate to what your feelings are. So I've, I've wrote sort of, if, if I get a funny poem in my head, I feel like I have different poems for different places. So, so if I get, <laughs> if a funny poem comes in my head, I'll put that on like my, my personal page to like because friends and family you know it might give them a chuckle but right, what I right. call poetry poetry um, tends to go in a poetry place because you know it's not everyone's cup of tea is it poetry so I don't think people want to be bombarded but with your poetry but as as this has progressed through the forum mm -hmm. and, and the prompts and everything else, I just think um, it's kind of took on a life of its own. Yeah, absolutely. And um, in terms of like influences, um, who are like some of your major influences in terms of, you know, of writers and, and poets and or even like lyricists or other artists? Well, I don't think it's hard for anyone to know who reads any of my poetry that I'm, I love rhyme. Literally, I love rhyme. So I think, you know, I used to dance when I was younger and I think poetry that rhymes and has rhythm and sort of sings along it, you know, it's the same kind of thing to me. It's, it's words dancing. So I think sort of, you know, I love nonsense poetry like Lewis Carroll's poetry. Um, big fan of Felix Dennis. I like his mm. poetry. Uh, and then I love all the classical poetry. Um, I mean, I just sort of think uh, when we were at school doing, say, Shakespeare and things like that, it, and the breaking down of poetry, it used to drive me mad. <laughs> you know, they're always having to explain everything about the word choices. And, and sometimes I sort of think, sometimes I do go out of my way to say things in a certain way, but mostly um, I just go with the flow of what, com what freely comes out when I'm writing. So it's more honest in that way. You know, I've tried poetry where I've thought, oh, I need to be a bit more wordy and get this out and get, you know, the thesaurus out and go for it. But it doesn't suit, it doesn't suit me. And it doesn't sound like me either. So I think, I think that probably the only thing I could genuinely talk about in form and everything else is just, I've, I've learned that there's some voice in my poetry that you probably know it's me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I could definitely um, pick your poetry out of a crowd without your name on it and say that's that's a Joanne piece right there. Yeah, well, that's that, that, that's, a, that's a massive compliment. Thank you. And that, as I say, but that, I think, when it, the first forum I went on, so here's a, this is like my bugbear, if you like, the first, forum that I went on I wrote a poem and it was um it was in response to something that I'd read and it was quite you know it was just sort of offering a hand to someone who might be 
you know, having a bad time. And somebody just put underneath, like, this was a terrible cliche. Um, and, you know, the rhyme of it. And that it was very old hat and cliche. And so then it kind of knocks you a bit. And, but I think what I've learned since then is, like, it's, you've got to be true to yourself in what you're writing and sometimes my poetry the one sometimes they don't rhyme and they don't rhyme on purpose because right. i'm feeling like i don't want this one to sing and dance i want mm -hmm. it just to say the words i want it to say so yeah sometimes but but mostly i think oh hello to lisa white there just said hello um yeah i think mostly that is I like positivity and you know you'll know from reading when I write things about what are supposedly dark themes <laughs> I always end I always have to turn it round like if it's going all dark I have to end it with a hopeful note because <laughs> I, I, yeah that's that's what I like and you know I'm not really and I think like some of the things that I've wrote for say women with menopause or you know people having a bit of a mixed up time I just think uh, you might be able to identify something in your poetry and it might have a little bit of use to someone that they say oh yeah I'm not going mad somebody else feels like that yeah relatability is it's all it's what the, you know the artistic expression is about and that sense of even, you know, even after the piece is done and it's out there, um, it's the piece has a kind of an organic quality as it has like a relationship with the audience and how they interpret it. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's one of the reasons, like I'm just presently, uh, I've been reading off somebody else's recommendation. I've been reading a bit of Milton poetry um, and with some kind of explanations alongside of it and it's just like when you break it down into um, when you start breaking a poem down and somebody this is what I hated about GCSE poetry that when they start saying to you this is what the poet meant well no maybe the poet didn't mean that the poet you I think you should take from it what you think it meant and some poems, I haven't got a clue what they mean, but I love the <laughs> rhythm or the way, I just love the sound of the words when I speak them. So, yeah. Yeah, There's so, an and, and in, in terms of, um, you know, interpretation, I, I, I don't always know exactly what I'm on about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's that. Well, that's me. I might start off with a line and think, right, I'm off on this line. And then I'll start and then I might say something halfway through that directs me towards something else. So it ends up, um, it ends up that it kind of, it looks like, oh, wait a minute, the poem's about this. But it's just, it's a journey in writing, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, you're just writing down and people travel that poem with you and they might get something from the poem or they might think it's nonsense. I don't yeah, mind if people think my poems are nonsense because I like nonsense poetry. So I wouldn't take that as a bad. So the, um, the children's book, that's so fascinating because... Um, I, I'm a person who only writes poetry. I don't really get into prose. Um, and, and to write from like, you know, a targeted audience that's like so different, um, from, from your presently, your own experience. What, what is it like to kind of, uh, right in that mindset to be able to to connect with the young child well first of all um thank you lucy first of all um it, it's 
wonderful. So I've literally found a place to be like flood the world with happiness uh, because children, are, you know, they're not um, my singy dancy poem in a children's picture book is literally been the best fun I've had this year doing it with, I'll just mention Alessandra Fowler uh, because her illustrations are amazing. And to have that thing of writing some words, however simple, and then turning them into a picture and then children are, um, you know, the, the, they come at it from all different it's very very it's a very very simple sort of poetry loose poet i would call it poetry because it's not perfect in its meter etc because it needs that story element but um but it's literally it, it comes back to that, that line i didn't realize when i did this book i didn't want this book to be my first book but it turned out to be the first book and it is called Dream Big Little One. And it's basically telling children that, you know, you can have a dream and whatever in life, you can, nothing to say you can't achieve that dream. And when, I, when I've been going to these nursery schools to see children, I didn't realize um, <laughs> the, the children see me as a person achieving my dream by holding a book in front of them. So that's had a massive, like, positive, if you know, impact on me and, and the feedback I've had from children. Uh, and I, yeah, to be honest, I didn't really expect that. You know, I hadn't got that far in my head. I just wanted to do a book that, um, you know, all my books are going to raise money for various charities which is in my mind, um, you know, one word, one small word might make a difference. That's how I view it. Um, so, and the response has just been really, really good. I don't know why I've sold so many books in America at this moment. <laughs> so come on, UK, help me out. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, but yeah, it's, it's really, really lovely thing. And I, I've, I started off thinking, oh, it's such a simple poem for children, and but I've been, I've just been, I've just watched um, a masterclass thing with Julia Donaldson who wrote the Gruffalo, and it, you know I felt like I sat up taller after I'd watched it because I'm just sort of giving myself, you know, I'm thinking I've wrote something really really simple, and most poets could probably write this these same words. It's very very simple. Um, but like she said, you've, the pictures, when you come to the illustration stage, the whole thing of it is in your head where you wrote the poem. And then you need to meet an illustrator who kind of understands what you're seeing, which I have with Alessandra. And it's the, honestly, it's the best fun I've had. Um, That's... You, you've not seen that book yet, have you? So you can't... Um, you can't comment it's, because yours is yours is on the slow train. It, it it's on the on the slow train from from the west coast of Canada out in BC. Yeah, <laughs> but as I say, it's it's very very simple. But um, the pictures are beautiful to it, and um, the response from it has hiya Scooby Dooby, and the response to it has been amazing, and uh, I genuinely you know. I've ended up feeling proud of it. That that is that is fantastic and an incredible message. So, how did you first of all? How did you get hooked up with um, an illustrator, and what was the relationship and the communication like in terms of matching the the two art forms together? Okay, so basically I spoke to, uh, when I decided that I was going to self-publish um, my first two books and then I'm going to um, go back 
towards, uh, you know, my plan is to publish the first two books. I was trying to build a bit of a CV of poetry to then go back to traditional publishers um, and say, right, I've done these two books and they're for sale here, here and here. And I'm published in some poetry books, you know, to give yourself a little bit of but it, it's looking like you have to sort of get involved with an agent. I'm not really sure mm. to that point because all that I've had from that process is either vanity offers where you put into yourself and you may as well self-publish if that happens because you've got all the rights to it then. Um, but I got involved with Purple Parrot Publishing, um, a lovely lady there called Viv, and she you know, sort of said to me, go and have a look on this site and sort of see people's work. And, you know, you can choose from that, which is where I saw Alessandra's work. And I got in mm. touch with her expecting her because the site was mainly abroad. I expected her to be American, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and uh, I somehow found the only English woman. <laughs> um, so she's... She's in Cornwall, so I'm one and she's the other. But I've just got on with her like a house on fire. And um, she's just, what's been said in the poem, this poem for Dream Big is fairly, um, I think it's, it, you, as you read it, you'll see, the, you'll see the idea in your head anyway. But the one we're working on now, the whale, um, She's on the same, she genuinely is on the same page with me, how passionately she feels about its message of recycling and, you know, generally got some purpose. Um, so, yeah, uh, we just, we generally, she sends me sketches and, and or she asks me what I'm thinking of for page such a thing. And I say, this is great when you're doing it yourself because then I say, can you put my daughter on the boat and can you make it that my son is the child at the back of the thing and, uh, you know, my animals are in the pictures. and <laughs> Yeah, so when, so when I've gone to read to nursery schools, I've been able to say, you know, I can tell you some secrets about this book. You know, this, they're not just random people. These are these are my people in this book, um, which has just been amazing fun. So not only is it, my dad said to me the other day, um, it's an achievement. So like, you know, we're not gushy people. We don't sort of overdo it on the, so that was, I thought, oh yeah, okay. So my dad thinks that's good. Um, and he basically said, you know, you're leaving, you're leaving something behind. Yeah, and Lucy's just said, start getting little ones inspired to love poetry. Mm. So, ex exactly. I mean, I've written one um, that isn't at the stage of illustration or anything yet called Polly Poet. And Polly Poet is um, ridiculed at school because she rhymes, rhymey, rhymey all the time. And then this, this turns out to be something at school where they need rhyme. And then she comes, she sort of saves the day by rhyming off in spiel to, you know, and then to encourage children to do the same, to get a love of words. For me personally, it all comes from reading, you know, that, that first stage of learning to read and reading with your children, which I've done. And so it's kind of obvious to me to come to this because that's been my favourite thing, reading picture books with my kids. Like <laughs> Dr. Zeus has to get a mention for the crazy rhyming. Uh, I absolutely loved reading those books, my kids. Um, and sort of, you know, the Jabberwocky and things like that. And, you know, so, I, I, yeah, I think I, I agree that m my feeling is with that it's, um, oh, Lisa's agreeing. I think it's coming to a point of, you know, children, there's ways to express yourself um, however you're feeling, good or bad, and poetry comes to that. Um, yeah. 
poetry is, um, I think, a really unique art form, um, especially after it kind of got separated from, you know, narrative. You know, it used to be so tied to narrative, to mythology, all of that. But then when it kind of separated, it be kind of became, um, you know, a little bit more abstract and veiled. And I think um, it's an incredible art form for children especially because it allows so much more unlimited creativity. Yeah, exactly. So, and it, it, I, I say, when with this particular, I have to put my glasses on now so I can see. I think this is my book and it's very pretty. And as I say, it's, it's funny how it worked out for um, it being the first book. So here's this picture book that I'm telling children, you know, to and using these illustrations of all different animals to say, you know, everyone's got a dream and there's nothing stopping you trying for it, you know, and it, it can happen. And then as this book has happened, this is my dream. So I think in some way, I was, it's a subconscious, there's a line in this book where the children said, what can I do? And I said that to you before. I didn't think about it when I wrote it. I just wrote it. But I think that's exactly what I was thinking when I set off with this plan of I was going to do some picture books and raise some money for some charities and feel like I was doing something useful with my words. So, so somehow it's an allegory of what I was thinking at the time. <laughs> that's, you know, that's a, a perfect, a perfect um, confluence. It's, it's a synchronicity. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's been really enjoyable. And the same thing when we came to uh, the Poetry Kingdom's beautiful anthology. I sent this like I was really fed up of submitting and never getting anywhere. Mm. And um, I, I sent this poem sort of having no real hope of getting in the book. So <laughs> it is one of my simplest poems and it's called Born. And I decided to send it because I was hoping to be born as a poet. And there it is. It's in the book. I think I had to write a poem after it afterwards, didn't I, saying that I was so many pages away from Shakespeare quote, which really pleased me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Thank you very much. So, I, so when um, when I was looking around, um, just seeing kind of where your your book was being sold, I was super impressed at all the the different places that it was sold at. I mean, you, you know, not only Amazon and various um, you know independent bookstores but also like target and and walmart and various places like that <laughs> yeah i had to do a post about that i literally couldn't believe it when it was on walmart i had to ring the publisher and say whoa i don't know if you know but this this book is is on walmart's site and obviously it's it's i don't know it's how things get distributed isn't it but it still needs a shove to help it so all help is accepted. So how did you get hooked up with your publisher? Um, well, I think I started off, um, my husband has a cousin that does illustrations, but he is in a different country. And I, I spoke to him and um, he had been with this publisher previously in a piece that he, a work he did. So that's how it, and then I just ended up ringing that. As I say, it had a bit of negative experience with, um, you get these lovely emails that say, we are, you know, so pleased to offer you um, 
publishing deal and then and it all looks great and then it comes to the bottom line like I've had one for a poetry collection um, and the books were going to be about £13 each and they wanted me to buy the first thousand and then you get your money back when you sell it's not the way to do it is it so no, uh, no I just had a conversation and then it came from him really to speak to her because she does uh, Purple Parrot does assisted publishing so because self publishing I mean you've got to be a little bit techno smart to do um, <laughs> put all the bits together whereas with assisted publishing um, Viv sort of does all the ISBN registration and she sort of make sure your format's good and checks it. So, yeah, so it's it's a big helping hand to doing it. Yeah, yeah that's... Lots of cheesters. I've not heard that word before, but I like it. Um, <laughs> there is. And then, as I say, I've had another one from another publisher, and uh, they are vanity offers because you get excited about it. And then it's not unreasonable to put some money into something that you want to do. But if you look carefully at it, you know, it's the controlling of it and the royalties. Um, and for me, to, for me to want to do a donation to charity from each of my books, that's complicated as well in terms of if somebody else had published the book. So yeah. that's worked out right for me. That was the right way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. There are... There are so many, uh, you know, snakes in the grass in the yeah. in the publishing world. I've I've certainly come across that myself. Um, you know, anytime, yeah, like you say, they they demand that you that you buy a certain et cetera et cetera number. It's like that's a that's a major major red flag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. I've learned that lesson. That would be my advice to anybody, that if, the, if somebody is asking you to pay to be published, um, walk away. If you're going to pay, do it yourself. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, that's what great. I've learned from that experience. Um, yeah. But, I mean, just from having those, the poetry that's been published in these books this year, it's a massive boost and I just and it's just give me some belief now that it's not it's not so ridiculous the idea that I might actually do a poetry book I uh, think it would be I think it would be absolutely amazing I think you're such an extremely extremely talented artist and I'm always blown away by the prolificness and the quality of your art. That, well, that's really kind. As I, as I say, I just, personally, I just look around and, and if you, you buy poetry books and it's amazing and, uh, you know, you look um, at what's out there in the forums. Uh, to be honest with you, most of my reading at the moment, when you say about what you're looking into, um, you know, you go through that spell of sitting and reading, you know, Blake, Auden, or, you know, all these different, and um, Lewis Carroll, love nonsensical. But then I've found myself, I've actually, at the moment, I'm reading mostly people who are around me in the forums. All the, there's so many people with um, poetry books out and the standard of them is amazing. So it's, it's a really difficult area and I'm glad from my perspective because it's, it's pretty hard work marketing a book mm. uh, if you've not got that sales skill. I would much rather keep writing poetry than be trying to sell a book. Um, but people with poetry, I think it, uh, it is niche, isn't it? And it's, it's, yeah. it's really difficult to get followings uh, and it's really difficult to sell those books. So I'm glad from my perspective um, that I'm kind of, I'm more into the, uh, you know, a slightly different area with children, going into the 
the books with children. But I am considering now, I think 2,000 poems down the line, I think I probably should put something together just for a jolly. <laughs> you know, yeah. just, just to put it in on the page there. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of poetry and speaking yes. of all of that good stuff, would you like to read something? Uh, yes, I would. So I now have to do another technical moment. <laughs> oh, there it is. So I'd quite like to, just because I am a proud Mancunian, I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to read two poems, if that's okay. Yeah, so absolutely. One, one will be a poem poem, but this one is just a Mancunian poem. And I'd quite like to read that while I've got this little moment because I am a proud Mancunian. So, just another mank on a Monday, wishing it was still waking up to Sunday, living it large, dancing with our kid, Lifting up the revelry underneath life's lid Singing like we know the tune of God's own favourite city Manchester, it rivals everyone in precious words so gritty We need no rank to be a man. We're born here, it's tethered to your blood There's nothing beats us, are we understood? We rage, we dance, we sing, we live We carry others, we earn to give I've walked these streets a million times and never tire of their endless rhymes. I'm blue, got character undefined. The coffers of jokes are never depleted. Suck it up, Southern, or anyone Southeast or West. We're the heart of the North, and yeah, we do it best. In pies, in lyrics, in beer, in vimto, in bands of brothers of comedy and woe. There's nothing ever touches me like home is all I know. <laughs> that That is fantastic. I love the spirit of it, the energy, and really capture like a sense of, of atmosphere of your home. Yeah, and I literally just think Manchester's ace. It's nice to love where you live. <laughs> okay, and then I'd quite like to read this one just because wouldn't it be nice if all the world was brilliant? Okay. If all the world could chant and chime, speak lyrical of prose in time, and find a way in hold of rhyme, and love could live in hope sublime. If all the world was in rapport, held hands that reached in vast support, Sent negative to far-flung port, for isn't life a tad too short? If all the world could harvest fair, and in its gladness all could share, for every heart that's beating there deserves to live in arms that care. If all the world was listening to every sound on flight of wing, the subtle sing of everything, then all the bells in joy would sing. If only trees could hold their breath, Leaves stay still, not fall in death. Of love, this life was ne'er bereft. If all the world could hold what's left. Hmm. That is absolutely gorgeous. The the rhythm and the rhyme, and the message so lovely, so beautiful. Thank you. So that's literally the first time I've read poetry on anything. So. Well, I am super impressed. That was a lovely reading. You definitely, definitely have a, a, a an excellent sense of cadence. And as you've as you've uh, said multiple times, the dance. You definitely got that feeling of the dance in your reading yes. and in all of your work. Yes, uh, that's very kind, Lucy. But I'm sure that's not true. My voice. I do sound. <laughs> Uh, I have been likened to Mrs. Merton when I'm talking. So I've got I, quite a nasal twang. I, I, it's interesting. I, I feel like um, when you did your poetry reading that your accent shifted slightly. It did. Yeah. So 
So when I'm reading Mancunian, I've got to be Mancunian. <laughs> and, you, like, and then uh, I had to chant and chime. So I had to be slightly softer in my chant and chime. I just wanted to have read a Mancunian poem. See, you're, you're a natural performer and you didn't even know it. <laughs> well, as everyone keeps saying to me, you're a poet <laughs> and you don't know it. I love that saying. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Re Regina Tempest. As Tempest as. Very That's nice, Brandy. thank you. That's Who is Brandy. that? That's oh, Brandy. Is it? Yeah. Hello, Brandy. Thank you. So in terms of like you were talking about like getting into getting into forums and you know expanding into that how do you see yourself um personally and artists in just kind of a general sense um how does community affect you and and your creative process and and how do you oh. evolve massively inspiring massively inspiring like uh, the prompts you get from people some sometimes you just literally sometimes it's like if I, I can read someone's poem and like there might be one word you might just say rain and that's it i'm off on a poem about rain uh, i just uh, the same applies to me when i read other poetry i think that's how my mind works it might just be a word that triggers me but I, I think the prompts and I think being involved and for instance with say Brandy with all the mythical stuff and you know that's not something that I knew a lot about uh, when I came to it at the beginning so I do feel that sort of you know these prompts and things the the they encourage you to sort of read up on a, an area you didn't previously know about. So that's encouraging. Um, and language, I love language. And I kind of, you know, went through a little phase of thinking and, you know, get into a thesaurus and uh, there's nothing wrong with expanding your words. But I, then I didn't, I felt like I wasn't talking how I would speak rather than talk. Um, so I think you've just got, in the end, I've just learned you've got to be true to yourself and what you're saying and whether or not you're saying anything. I'm not always yeah. saying something. Sometimes I'm just rhyming. Uh, sometimes you just need to string together some pretty words. Yeah, and some sometimes that's lovely. You know, it, it's I just like that. So I just make... I think I probably started out thinking, you know, um, that I should apologise for not being sort of, I'm not doing this form and I'm not doing that. and uh, But I'm past that now. I, you know, I don't, um, I don't expect anything from it. So I, I think, uh, I think that's helped me in a way. I'm not expecting anything from it. So everything is a bonus. So being in pages, in those books is a massive bonus um, and and the book is a massive bonus and then that it's made me realize I can do it so carry on yeah that's a fantastic um, fantastic at um, attitude to have and a great message for for everybody out there um, certainly doing a book of my own is something I want to do eventually and that's that's yeah, very inspiring. Should. Yeah, you should because your poetry is amazing and and your wordology is amazing. So yeah, you should. And there's there's nothing I just I don't know, maybe it's my age, but I just feel like it I will if I want. Fortune so, favors the bold. Yeah, and you'll you just find you you just find a way, don't you? I don't really know how this ended up where I've ended up sat talking to you, for instance. But it's it it's just evolved, and these like means a lot to me to be in poetry books. 
that means a lot to me. Um, you know, um, that that's that's my achievement to me. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care how many they sell. It's there in the book, something that you wrote. And I think everybody that's done that understands that. Yeah, no, I I absolutely, absolutely understand that. It's it's quite uh, quite an experience to see your own your own words, you know, written down like that um, on the page in you know mm -hmm. in a, a publication that comes out like that, and you know, and speaking to the sense of community and speaking to the sense of you know the publishing world. Um, you know, being able to do so much ourselves, because um, all of this, like the, the Quintessence book um, from Soul Poetry Society, the um, the Poetry Kingdom book, you know, these are all... that book up. Here it is. There we go. Yep. Yeah. You know, all of that is, like, built on just us, like, independent people in our own in our own communities you know we're not yeah. we're not big fancy publishers we just that's just something that that we made happen and we you know we lean on each other yeah and that as i say that's that's helped a lot of people achieve that moment me in particular uh but also i know a lot of people will feel the same that you know, you, you get involved in these communities and do it that way. Bless you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <you're welcome. laughs> yeah, because the, the, this, I I just felt when I was trying with the, as I say, with the publishing journey previous to this, it just felt like a massive silence, mm. and it's very frustrating. Um. And make and it just makes you feel like you you know you can't do it. And I keep there's certain things I want to get in. Um, I want to be in the magazine, The North. I'll just put that out <laughs> there. You know, send it to the universe. Um, <laughs> and the, the book keeps coming, and you think, well, so do I? How do I need to write something that fits into what they want? Mm. That's the that's the hardest thing. So. Yeah, it's just sent me down a different road of thinking, well, <clears throat> I'll do it myself. And it's, you know, it's it's a brave new world. And I think, um, it's you possible. know, I think all, of, yeah, and all of these, you know, the types of, of publishers that are a little bit more highfalutin and, and whatever, I think they really need to adjust their yeah, philosophy because, it, because they won't let you near it, yeah it, it's it's like the wizard of oz is like up there and is you know and you can't speak to the wizard um it's the same kind of thing they're just totally detached and you've got to get you know a, a middle person to sort of help you do it but if if they ask for submissions you should at least get answers mm, yep um, and you don't. Yeah. And so. you know, it's 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 the new world of independent and assisted publishing, and we are coming for all of you. Yes, we are Correct. Caesar crossing the Rubicon. <laughs> so look out. Yeah, exactly. Coming. I you. had to get more. I had to get my Roman jab in there somewhere. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad you did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that that's right. Just go for it yourself in the end. Because um, it's really not easy to get to see that wizard. Definitely. Okay. And, um, yeah, go for your dream. Be independent as well as being part of community independent mm -hmm. community together that duality i love yeah. that um is there anything else you would like to say before we close it out um i'll read you a poem if you like 
Absolutely. So I just have to find them. Uh, I'll just type that in wrong. My daughter would go mad if she was here. <laughs> right. Uh, this for me, I just, I looked through my poems today. I don't know if it's great, but it completely sums up what I've said to you about um, where you are yourself in poetry. So, and you shall be no other than you are. Only life in breath is common. Considering, as we gaze upon malaise, considering our days, does doubt bang a drum and thus summon. And the troops shall rally, race to the front, argue and emerge compliant. And forgotten is the strength, the vast acknowledgement of the steel that sits in bones of you defiant. Who knows better than you what ails in regard to self? The strings that tie and hold inside and govern the mind in stealth. True is the gut in its feeling. Trust travels and traverses afar. You are one and unique in the body of your speak and you shall be no other than you are. Mm. Absolutely impeccable flow and the message is absolutely perfect and encapsulates everything that we've talked about today thank you really appreciate so, that so everybody go out and get yourself a copy of everything that joanne is published in and especially this especially one? Joanne's book. that's right dream big little one and big ones that's right, yes. Dreaming is for everybody. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, this has been a lovely time. And thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for doing this, Joanne. Thank you and, for having uh, me. Absolutely. And thank you, everybody, for, for watching. We hope that you have enjoyed uh, this experience. And um, we'll do this again. Plenty more to do from the Poetry Kingdom. All types of things happening. Stay tuned on this channel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, have an excellent rest of the evening, afternoon, morning, or wherever, wherever you are from. Thank you very All much, right. Patrick. Very kind. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're quite welcome, Joanne. Bye. Love Bye. to the kingdom. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.